So, after 4 weeks with this machine, there's a lot to talk about with the new M1 Pro chips and its capabilities. I've already made a video taking a look at it from a standard reviewer's point of view and a student's point of view. So today we're going to be taking a look from the musician's point of view. For musicians, there are 3 main areas that are super important and dictate your purchasing decisions. Performance, Practicality, Stability. These 3 areas are what I'll be basing my review of the new 14 inch MacBook Pro on. So let's get into it. Performance. To start off, I'll explain the specs that I have here right now. The MacBook Pro that I have here is the base model which costs 2000 US dollars. For that money, you get the M1 Pro chip with 6 high performance cores and 2 high efficiency cores. You get 16GB of unified memory or RAM and 512GB of solid state storage. The first performance test I'll be running are some benchmarks in Logic Pro X. I've set my buffer size to 1024 samples and processing threads to automatic for these two benchmarks. The first benchmark I'll be testing is how many instances of an Alchemy preset that has EQ, reverb, delay, auto filter and a vocal doubler can the M1 Pro handle before overloading. After a few runs, the M1 Pro managed to hit 40 instances playing a C major 7 chord for 4 bars. Comparing that to an Intel i7-6600U, that got 6 tracks for some reference. Next benchmark is testing how many serum patches we can get without getting a system overload error. Serum is probably one of the most CPU intensive plugins out there, so this will be a good indicator of what this chip is capable of. I layered multiple serum patches on top of each other, all playing a 4 chord regression. I used a variety of presets from pads, chords, arps and leads to see how it would handle it. And we have hit 28 patches before getting a system overload error. Plenty of power for any project. With the benchmarks out of the way, let's get into some real world examples. So I've created a full EDM production from scratch to see how the M1 Pro chip handles it. A dedicated video on this process will be released soon, so make sure you subscribe so you can check that out. Throughout the process, I didn't experience any system overload warnings at a buffer size of 128 samples. Loading up several serum and alchemy patches was no problem along with reverb and compression plugins. With some mixing applied, the performance meter was sitting around 70% consistently. I didn't need to bounce any of the patches to audio which is very convenient and impressive. I also didn't experience any fan noise or much heat which is very cool. Overall it's been smooth sailing and there were almost no roadblocks. However, I did experience some crashes which I will discuss in the stability section of this video. With these new laptops, Apple has put in faster storage and the new unified memory architecture which does make a big difference in the user experience within the door. Loading samples and plugins feel snappier and quicker, which helps the workflow a lot. With the project I was working on, taking a quick look at our activity monitor at the end of the session, we're using about 3.1GB of RAM. Most of the plugins I'm using are not updated for Apple Silicon, so it looks like the translation layer, Rosetta, takes up a lot of RAM, about 1.5GB alone. This project isn't the biggest, but 3.1GB of RAM at 38 tracks leaves a lot of headroom. In another project with 101 tracks, it was using 4.65GB of RAM. I also have 20 Safari tabs open, Spotify, 5 Chrome tabs, Discord, Visual Studio Code, and QuickType open in the background. And we're only using 13 out of 16GB of RAM. So that's heaps of headroom for anything. To wrap it up, performance on the new M1 Pro MacBook Pro is top tier. It will take anything you throw at it and has heaps of headroom, even when working on huge projects. RAM utilization is pretty low and leaves heaps of headroom for apps in the background and for bigger projects. The updated storage combined with the new unified memory architecture makes loading projects, samples and plugins super quick and snappy. Not to mention this is the base model which is even more impressive. The next area that's most important for musicians is practicality. Having a laptop that you can take anywhere and that allows you to do what you need to do is a key feature creators look for. So we know that performance is great on this laptop, but how practical is it? This year Apple has gone function over form, which has influenced the design of the new MacBooks this year by quite a bit. First off, it is slightly thicker and heavier than the last 13 inch MacBook Pros, but those were considered to be very thin. So sitting at 1.5 kgs and 1.55 cm in thickness, this MacBook is still super light and small enough for most people. Build quality is also on point like any of Apple's products. You can feel the density and there's no flex whatsoever. The design this year is also super practical, nothing is wasted. From the tin borders on the display to the speaker size and overall body, Apple has not wasted any space creating a very compact and practical design. 
For size, I think this laptop is top tier as well. Battery life isn't the most important for most studio musicians, but for those who travel often, you will appreciate the amount of use you can get out of this thing. For mixed usage with 30 Safari tabs, Spotify, Logic Pro, and Final Cut, I got around 6 to 8 hours, which is plenty. At the end of my EDM production test, which lasted around 2 hours, I was sitting in around 50% with around another 2 hours left for a total of around 3.5 to 4 hours. So whether it's mixed or intensive usage, the battery life on this thing will let you work without a charger for a good amount of time. Lastly, ports. Finally, after so long, Apple has finally brought back the ports we needed back. On the right side, we have HDMI, an SD card reader, and one Thunderbolt 4 port. On the left side, we have MagSafe, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and an audio jack that supports high impedance headphones. So now you don't need to use any external gear to power your headphones, and you can plug it straight into this jack. Whether you need a compact device, good battery life, or ports, this MacBook checks all the boxes and is a super practical device for most people. Every musician needs stability and reliability for the devices. No one appreciates waiting for your laptop to restart or when the door decides to crash during an important session. And no one likes broken plugins. Unless you crack them, then that's your fault. <laughs> so is this MacBook stable enough and does it support every plugin? Not exactly. As of right now, many third-party plugin companies are working to get their plugins supported on macOS Monterey, which is still very new and it does have some bugs. But that does not mean they don't work. So far from my testing and from watching other people on YouTube with this laptop, most plugins are working fine. Isotope's collection works fine, x for Serum works well, Spitfire Sounds, Omnisphere and the like are all working fine. The only major third-party plugin company that I've had the most issues with is Native Instruments. So far they've been pretty buggy, but they have said they are working on it and should release a stable version for all their plugins within the near future. So for plugins, I suggest you take a look at the plugins you rely on and check if they're stable on the new MacBooks before you buy this machine. I'll leave a link below to a website that tracks all compatible plugins. Potentially, by the time you watch this video, all plugin companies may have updated their plugins and there might be no problems. Only time will tell. Concerning stability, during my test, I have experienced several crashes with the latest version of Logic Pro, especially when using Flex Pitch. I'm not sure if this is because of all the third-party plugins that I'm using that are not fully supported by Apple Silicon, or if it's a Monterey bug, or a Logic Pro bug. Hopefully it'll go away with one of the next software updates, but this is something you should be aware of. At the moment, everything is working and most plugins and doors are working fine on the new MacBooks. But stability is an issue that will be solved as time goes. All of these issues are bearable but are annoying and hopefully will be solved soon. So, if you're in the future, you should be fine. But for now, eh, you might want to wait a little bit. Now for the extra features. One amazing extra feature on this laptop that many musicians will appreciate is the speaker quality. For the size, they're on another level. Here's a quick comparison between another 14 inch device, the 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro and Studio Monitors. They obviously don't reach studio quality, but the bass and loudness this small device can produce is truly spectacular. Microphones are also super clean and clear. In fact, I'm recording the audio for this video with the built-in microphones on this laptop. I've got to say that they're really good and most musicians will appreciate being able to quickly record instruments or demos with the microphone on this laptop. Here's a quick comparison between the MacBook's microphone and my Audio Technica ATR2100. This is the microphone quality you can expect from the new MacBook Pro. This is the microphone quality you can expect from the Audio-Technica ATR2100. Andrew Hung made a really good video going in depth with the new microphones on these laptops, so I'll leave a link to that below. The display on these MacBooks have also been updated and use Apple's Pro Display XDR technology for more contrast, deeper blacks and higher brightness, which allows you to work on your project anywhere in any condition. Before I discuss comparisons in this video, I wanted to quickly discuss upgrade options. There are three areas that you can upgrade on your MacBook. The CPU, the RAM, and the storage. Upgrading any of these three areas costs another 200 to 400 US dollars. And you can go beyond that. 
For example, upgrading the CPU to 10 cores from 8 is $200, upgrading the RAM to 32GB costs $400 US dollars, and upgrading the storage to 1TB is $200. So if you think you need to upgrade any of these areas, this is how much it will cost you from the base model. You can configure the CPU all the way to the M1 Max with 10 CPU cores and 32 GPU cores, but that won't affect music production as it only upgrades the GPU cores and it's another $700 US dollars. So stick to the M1 Pro with 10 CPU cores if you want to upgrade. As you saw in my test, 16GB was enough to work on a project with 100 tracks along with plenty of headroom. So unless you are going beyond 100 tracks to like 200 or 300, I don't think you should upgrade the RAM. Storage is entirely dependent on what you need. If all you're doing is music production, 512 may be enough. But if you are video editing or working on other projects that are really really big, you may want to opt for the higher capacities, all the way to 8TB. You can also get the 16 inch version for another 500 US dollars and that also comes with the 10 core M1 Pro as standard. From there, the upgrade options are the same. Comparing the new MacBooks to some of Apple's other laptops, you have the M1 options from last year which are good for you if you are under a budget. The MacBook Air comes in at 1000 US dollars but it only has 8 GB of RAM and 256 GB of storage. The 13 inch MacBook Pro also has the same configuration and costs 1300 dollars. If you plan on upgrading the RAM and storage, which are $200 each, you should just buy the Air. If you want the 13 inch Pro, it's only a $300 upgrade for a much better laptop with the new MacBook Pros. The difference between the Air and the 13 inch Pro are minor, but the difference between these and the new MacBook Pros are huge. So I recommend you either go for the Air or for the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Comparing it to other Windows laptops, some of AMD and Intel's higher offerings can match the new MacBook Pro's performance and practicality. But they all cost the same price as this laptop or compromise in one of these areas. So it's really up to you if you want to go Mac OS or Windows. For example, you could go with a gaming laptop that's cheaper and has the latest AMD 5000 series chips. But it will have less battery life, more noise, heat and be a lot bigger than this MacBook. Or you could go with more graphics power, a similar form factor but significantly worse battery performance, more heat and noise for the same price with the Razer Blade 40. So what do I think about this laptop and should you buy it? Personally, I think this is one of the best if not the best laptop Apple has made that's actually worth its price tag. Performance is incredible and leaves plenty of headroom for any project. Practicality is on point with a super compact and functional design along with a strong battery life. You get incredible speakers, microphones and an amazing display along with important ports. The only issue I have is stability which is the weakest point for this laptop right now. For most people, this laptop would be perfect for you. But if one of the plugins or software you depend on are not fully supported, I suggest you wait a month or two for them to sort out the compatibility and support. Hopefully by then, macOS Monterey will also be bug free and there won't be any issues. Otherwise, this is the perfect laptop for musicians. So that's it, hope you guys enjoyed this video and were informed and entertained. Make sure to subscribe to see my full EDM production test and I'll see you in the next video.